Airborne contamination is everywhere. It's estimated that at peak times of the year, every cubic meter has about 50,000 fungal spores in it. To combat this, I've been using a still air box. However, a still air box has its limitations. They're pretty cumbersome to use because the limited size inside the still air box and every time you want to put something into or pull something out of the still air box, you have to open it up and then wait for airborne contamination to die down. A laminar flow hood is expensive and it's difficult to build, but that hasn't stopped me from dreaming about building one someday. So I started doing some research into how a laminar flow hood works, why it works, and how it's constructed. I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff I've learned, and I also want to hear from you guys. What do you use at home in your mycology practices, and how does it work for you? All right, let's jump right into the video. In this illustration, we're gonna use red to indicate dirty air, orange to indicate air that's a little bit less dirty, and then blue to indicate really clean air. This is the layout of a typical laminar flow hood. We have a box or a frame, and then a plenum, a blower motor, a pre-filter to screen out any big dust particles, and a high efficiency particulate air filter, also known as a HEPA filter. Our outside air is full of contaminants. Dust, fungal spores, bacteria, and plenty of other nasty things are floating around everywhere. Absent a tool to mitigate this, we can easily contaminate our substrates and end up growing mold and bacteria science experiments instead of our mushrooms. In the laminar flow hood, air is drawn through a pre-filter by the blower which is essentially just a heavy-duty fan. The pre-filter removes larger particulate and is typically removable and easily replaceable. The fan speeds up the air and forces it into the filter plenum and then through the HEPA filter. The HEPA filter removes up to 99.99% of particulate down to about 0.3 microns, which is the smallest that we can expect bacteria and fungal spores to be. The thick filter also straightens out the airstream, creating laminar flow. This is pretty important, which we'll get into in a little bit. As flow moves away from being laminar, it starts to swirl and ends up picking up particles from the air around us. So as we get farther away from the flow hood, the greater the chances are that our air will be contaminated. Here's another quick illustration from the top. So there's this really cool math equation called the Reynolds number, and it's a ratio between the pushing forces and the restricting forces that occur in a fluid. The equation is the fluid density times the fluid velocity times the length that the fluid has traveled divided by the viscosity of the fluid. And another way to look at this is the pushing forces divided by the restricting forces. And it's really just a ratio of these two different forces. So if the ratio ends up being greater than 2000, it's typically gonna be turbulent flow, and less than 2000 will be laminar flow. As air flows through the filter, the length of fluid travel goes up a little bit, but the velocity of the air slows down quite significantly. And this causes the ratio and the Reynolds number to go down, and ideally it goes down to less than 2000 if we've designed our filter correctly. Fluid density and fluid viscosity are not going to change as air flows through the hood. As air continues to travel after it exits the hood, the length of fluid travel goes up quite a bit. But since there's less restrictions, the velocity of the fluid is gonna go down very slowly. This causes Reynolds number to go up and our once laminar flow becomes turbulent. So let's take a look at a laminar flow hood that's been incorrectly designed. In this, the filter is too small and it doesn't provide enough restriction. Basically, the air coming out of the filter is already turbulent from the beginning. So as the air comes out and it swirls, it's gonna pick up particulate from the outside air and fling it back towards the filter and into our work area. And you can see the difference between what laminar flow looks like and how there's a safe work area here. And then in a poorly designed laminar flow hood where turbulent flow exists basically from the outside of the filter. And as you can see in this visualization, air can actually flow backwards into the work area and carry contaminants with it. Now this is really bad if we're trying to maintain a sterile environment and do sterile work if we have spores and bacteria dropping onto our work surfaces. 
Hey, I hope you guys learned something. I know I certainly did. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I have videos coming out every three days and I'm gonna keep digging into the basics of how things work and why they work. And hopefully on that basis of knowledge, we can build a better mycology future for all of us. All right guys, see you around next time, thanks.